previously on High Adventure. One of your guys who kind of headed to the edge of, of the encampment and the trenches that Cade made, you, you see he comes running back towards you, like, and terror is on his face. And he's like, Master Cho, come come quickly. I'll follow him. And and he runs to the northern like point and he ducks down behind a wall and then he points up. And you see basically at where the plateau is, you know, like oh kind of to the northeast, right? Like you you could see up the trail and where the trail hits the plateau and levels out. From where you are, you can't see the mouth of the of the mine entrance, but you could see the edge of that plateau, right? Of the landing. You see eight huge white furred beasts just standing in a line along the edge of that mountain, looking down at your camp. They don't have rocks in their hands or anything, but they're basically just lined up looking at your camp. And and your guy next to you is like, Master, what do we do? Between the rise of the Kimrog Empire and the tumultuous demon wars, there was an enigmatic era. A time when brave souls traversed oceans and continents in search of glory, riches, and power. Let us tell you of the days of high adventure. Hello and welcome back to High Adventure. Uh, the brothers Zen have found themselves at dawn after a, a long rest uh, with some interesting occurrences over the evening. Um, you guys had been informed by White Eagle uh, about midway through the night that uh, he had scouted and saw um, a variety of different locations where some of these white furred creatures had been seen. Uh, he described that he saw several of them a couple hundred feet uh, or a, a hundred feet above the mine entrance, which is a couple hundred feet above where your base camp is. Uh, he also said that there were some of them um, continuing to stockpile larger boulders as well as stones um, on the western cliff of uh, the mountain where the mine is located, which kind of overlooks the mountain pass that Mongozo had led you guys through with your, your whole party and the carts and wagons. So you, at dawn, uh, as everybody was kind of waking up, you look up and at the top of the path that leads up to the mine entrance, where that path plateaus into kind of a, a landing, you saw eight of the white firs standing, looking down at your base camp. Um, they did not seem to be holding rocks or anything like that. They just seemed to be looking. And that is where we are going to pick up. Okay. So what do you want to do? Uh, I confer with my brothers and tell them this may be a chance for us to spring, uh, get on the initiative with these beasts. I have, a, I have an idea and here's my idea. I can, I can turn into the devil cat that we saw on the previous island and sneak up behind them drop out and I'm going to summon my own allies and we can pinch them. You guys come up from the bottom and then I will come down from the top. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, brother. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen right now. So Element of, element of surprise is on our, to our advantage if you are able to pull this off, brother. We came here to accomplish something to help us uh, with our own ventures. I'm not leaving without accomplishing those things. Agreed. 
I, we don't know the distance. I, I just want to vision. clarify. This is the three of you. Mm -hmm. You're you're up. Other people are still sleeping. People who took other yeah. different watches. So I, I'm just. Yeah. You were just discussing this. There's no one else right now that is hearing. It. At the moment, There's I have to have right, my brother's support. But like you're you're around the fire. You're discussing this. Mm -hmm. You you notice that um the and and White Eagle by the way he was scouting so he's not with you. He's sleeping. Right. He right. flew off back to those original trees uh, a few hundred yards to the west that you found him mm -hmm. at, Kale. So, yes. so, um, so as you guys are discussing this, you notice that like the, the white furs are still kind of looking. They haven't moved forward. They're still kind of looking down at you guys. Mm -hmm. I have a question. How, yes. how, how good is their visibility into the camp? Well, we, uh, don't, we have no way of knowing how good they can see yet. If we can see how many yeah. they are from our vantage well, point, they could see inside yeah. the camp as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Well, we have a basically a ten foot uh, wall around our little encampment. Okay. So, so we can we can cinch up to the wall, so it doesn't look like we've left the camp, and find a way away from their their prying eyes. The, my concern is we need to wake everybody up to be on the same page. Yeah. So if we do it yeah. too hastily, they're going to react. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe Cho, brother, why don't you slowly wake up everybody as me and Cade walk up to the Palisade area or mm -hmm. the wall area there and then kind of get out of sight so they don't know where we're at. Mm -hmm. Nonchalantly. Kind of camouflage what's going on. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to slip out. I have to. Can we put any type of cover up so that uh, we can deter their view even further? Do we have uh, I mean, tar tarps that we can maybe you, drape? You have, I'm going to say you have four tarps, but that's, they're like four 10 by 10 tarps. And you, you have like a camp that's probably, you know, 50 feet in radius. Like mm -hmm. you can't so cover just, up it would just. It would give blind spots, but it wouldn't cover everything. Yeah, I mean, currently, a lot of blind spots are basically just the tents. Like, yeah. your guys are sleeping in tents. So they don't... Yeah. The white furs look, and they, they only see what they see. They don't know how many mm -hmm. guys are in each tent. Right. And the only mm -hmm. people outside of the tents currently are the three of you sitting around the fire. So, yeah. So, so we see how intelligent they are. And I can use some of my assassin dummies and put them around the camp like people. <laughs> I didn't know you had assassin dummies. Well, I can make them out of straw and sticks. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's let's get everybody up first. So we, we need to get everybody on the same page, like Shaw was saying. But make sure they stay hidden so we they don't yeah. reveal the numbers that we have. I'll 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 sneakily go All around right. to the different tents. Okay. So Cho, <clears throat> just g give me an idea of what you do like it you know when we, let's let's role play through the first tent okay so you you go up to the first tent and you what do you go in do you just crawl in and, and peek into the entrance what do you do i so if the tent if the plateau is uh north and to the back side of the tent i'll come around the front side to use the tent as a, a layer of of uh of camouflage okay. and I will just reach around into the tent. Hey, hey. Yeah. Oh yeah. Quietly. What is it? We've got to come together. We have a plan. What? Be very what? quiet about it. What's happening? The white furs are watching us and we need to adjourn in a meeting to discuss our plan. Where? By the fire. Well, no, not by the fire. Um, do we have a, like a common area? where we could adjourn uh, yeah around That's, the fire basically fire? the middle of the, the fire <laughs> right right where, right, where so right exactly where they can see us the mess yeah. the mess kit like you know basically your your crates for food and all that stuff and the wagons and we can't hide our numbers if we all just stand by the fire um there's only so much we can do maybe we should maybe i should just give them individually the plan and a we should pick a meeting place ourselves. Just let them know. You need to camouflage what I'm doing because I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip out of the camp through the tunnel I already made. And I'm gonna so we want to draw their mountain. attention to the yeah. center of camp. Then. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. that's good to know. 
All right. So I tell them all to meet by the fire. Oh, okay. They be very starting to be very nonchalant about it. You kind of hear them starting to get clothes on and uh, the ones who have armor and weapons. Um, okay. So you're, you're kind of going around from tent to tent. Shao Zen, what are you doing? I'm going to aid Cade in getting his way out of the encampment. So whatever he asks of me, I'm at the ready. Okay. So Cade, how are you proceeding? Where, where uh, are you moving okay. to? And where are you trying to make your change? So I move, I move against the wall where they can't see, they can't uh, directly see me. Okay. And then um, I touch my, my amulet and say a few words and I, uh, I cast pass without trace. And then I, ca- I uh, wild shape and I, I give a warning to the people that are up or coming out and no one's I even wild shape into the Okay, great. I just wild shape into the devil cat and then um, maintaining concentration on pass without trace. And then I slip out the tunnel and I'm heading, to, uh, I'm going like a, a little bit of a wide circle around the mountain because I'm going to get behind these yetis or whatever they are. Okay. So when we say wide circle, mm-hmm. are you going, trying to go west between the pass, the mountain pass between the two mm-hmm. mountains? Okay. Yeah. You whatever, whatever way. It's, okay. Yeah. I will get to you in a moment because that's a little bit yes. of a hike. Uh, it's yep. about a mile and a half out of from where your base yeah. camp is back to that. Yeah. So, meanwhile, yeah. um, Shao Zen, make a perception check. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Perception. Ooh, six. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> So you see your brother transform and then you're like, all right, he's on his way. And he, you know, you see him in this cat form crawl down into the tunnel that he had made and, and go, you know, basically out of and, and the, the encampment. And then you turn to look back and you, you see your brother Cho going over to the next tent. And like, you know, you hear people starting to like prepare. And then you look up the path towards the, the plateau and there's no white furs. <laughs> hmm. Uh, okay. So I walk away from my current area and I start heading over to Cho. Okay. You get to Cho. Cho, you have gone to three tents. So far, everyone is that you've gone to, uh, they are awake. Um, they, they're starting to quietly kind of put on clothes and gather themselves. You see your brother Shao kind of slink over towards you. Um, very stealthily. Brother. Yes, brother. The white furs have disappeared. We need to get a speedy reconnaissance on these guys. We need to know where they're at. Gather the men and get ready. Yes. Is is White Eagle awake? Uh, you don't see him. What you you do know Mwangozo, remember Mwangozo set up a camp in the trees to the south. Um, so if you wanted to, you can you can head over to where he was. <clears throat> Are there natural uh, things within the vicinity that I could use to to uh, put together some poison? And how long would that take if there are? Um, make a nature check. Nineteen. You think that if you, you know, spent a few hours kind of scouring the mountains and the hillsides, you might be able to find some plants that are poisonous in nature, but to make them truly lethal and effective, you would need to, to have not a lab, but basically you'd have to have, I need to have more than what I have. Yeah. Like you'd have to have like a kitchen and, and, you know, a poison, like the, the tools from a poisoner's kit to to kind of simmer the plants and then pull the concentrates and the extracts out. Okay. I'll scratch that. Uh, it, it would be a time consuming process. Like oh. even with the right tools and facilities, it might take you several days. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, 
what do you think, brother? So should we, uh, Chow, should we uh, go to the uh, other encampment, gather, and dis and figure out where they went? Uh, if we reveal too much, I think we might get ambushed. So the element of surprise still within the camp is to our advantage, but we need to gather everybody getting ready just in case to give Let's, Kate enough time to do whatever he's going to do. Uh, maybe casual. wake up while Gonzo. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. get him up. So who's going to go south to Mongozo's backup camp? I think I would be the fastest to reach with my speed. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, your speed. All right, so do two things. Number one, make me a stealth check to kind of stealthily sneak out of the camp. And then... Um, Make me an athletics check when you're done with 13 that. 13 for the stealth and 22 for athletics. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, transversing 300 feet. <laughs> <laughs> the wind. Freaking T1000 over here just freaking going at a, like a rocket. <laughs> Hilarious. Transformation. <laughs> All right. So you um, make it, you run about a half mile and you see like the, you get in the kind of the, the craggy um, hilly sort of terrain, which is sort of a mix of the rocky terrain where you're, you guys were at the, the base of um, the mountain but there's also kind of a lot of scrub brush, um, like low bushes. And you begin moving through there. And up ahead, uh, about another quarter mile, you see some trees at the, at the sort of the tops of some of the first rows of hills. And you believe that's where Mongozo was setting up a backup kind of base camp for you guys. Um, you, you run swiftly, um, kind of moving through this difficult terrain, jumping over things and you get to an area where there's like a, a cluster of just like four trees and some sparse vegetation. And, um, you see that a few of the trees have been cut down. You see stumps that are fresh, uh, that looks like they've been cut down and you see these trees stacked kind of, uh, in, in a row in a neat row. And it looks like maybe someone was trying to cut off some of the branches and some of the branches are stacked, but it looks like, you know, the work was sort of stopped. Um, mm -hmm. You see Mongozo sleeping in a hammock that he tied between two of the trees. And before you even get to him, you see, he rolls out of the hammock and he stands up and he's like, ah, good morning, eldest brother. <sighs> He's Good morning, sir. And he's like, I am oh, quite sore. It has been a long time since uh, I have had to chop down trees and do this kind of work, but I think it will be good to have this camp and to, to set up a, a bit of uh, dried out wood for future fires as we expand your mining camp. I think the urgency has escalated for us to need your assistance at the other camp. It looks like the white furs have gathered at the ridge and they're peering right now and not moving, but in a split second, they were all gone. I feel that we might get ambushed. So I would need your expertise and the men that were down here helping you create this camp. Would you follow us back? And, and, and help us prepare for whatever is to come. Wangozo looks around and he's like, uh, I think that the men, the three men who were down here before helping me, they must have gone back to your camp because they are not here. And he gestures around. We need to do a head count. <laughs> he says, I will, I will dress and get my spear. And he, he begins putting on his clothes and grabs his spear. Um, can I can I look around the area that he, yeah, his camp sure. and, and see if I see any footprints? Yep. Go ahead and make a survival check. <clears throat> oh, 20, but not natural. So you 
you're looking around, you see a lot of footprints because obviously they were clearing brush and starting to, you know, make a, a, a kind of an area for a camp. There's a ton of uh, footprints um, by the, uh, the, the stacks of trees and the different limbs. Uh, and you even still see like axes and, and tools that, you know, left out when they finished their work uh, before going to bed. You see um, three uh, or two, sorry, it would be two, two of the two man uh, little pup tents in addition to um, Mongozo's. Uh, you look in, the, the bed rolls are there, blankets are there, but there's no people in there. Do they look like they've been slept in? Yes. Okay. Um, but there's no people. As you're kind of going, and, and this is all while like Mongozo's getting dressed and, and getting his weapon. As, as you're kind of surveying the area, you find tracks, three sets of footprints leading back towards your camp. Humanoid? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wangozo comes up by you and he's, he's like, uh, I am ready. Okay. And I point, I point the tracks. And I say, maybe perhaps they went back to the camp, but I didn't see them when I left the camp. So I'm a little worried. So maybe we should be very uh, cautious walking back or <clears throat> transversing back to the camp to see if there's any other tracks on the way that maybe okay. I overlooked. So as you explained to this to him, he, he says, yes, uh, you, you guys begin walking back. Um, you and, well, Mongozo, so I'm going to say you can make, uh, because Wangozo is helping you, you can make a survival check with advantage. Uh, jackpot, 26, natural 20 with the advantage. 16 on the original one, and then I got a 20. Okay. So you're, you're moving in about, uh, let's say, at a half mile back, just, just as the hills are ending and going into kind of the flat, rocky terrain um, that's a quarter mile away from your camp. You see the sets of footprints, and you see them take off to the west. And, and the footprints go from kind of um, like what I would call average depth of impression, like walking impression to markedly faster and longer distances and deeper impressions as if all three of them took off running to the West. Moreover, you see as you track back to the East that there's a set of footprints um, that do not have shoes or boots. Like these are human sized, you know, maybe, maybe size 12, you know, foot prints like barefoot. Um, the impressions are not as deep as your three guys who were wearing boots, but it, it is clear that this set of, you know, footprints came from the East and followed all three of them. I pointed out to Wangozo, what do you make of this? He says, uh, I, I I do not know it. It would appear that uh, someone not wearing any sort of shoes or sandals or, or boots uh, was pursuing the three men. We can try to continue and follow these tracks to the west, if you would like. The, my problem is that the camp and my brother Cho won't know what's going on. So why don't you continue to the camp and give your aid? I think you will be uh, a crucial part in helping them. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and investigate because I can move really fast and I think I can manage this in a couple of steps. So As you I'll go ahead and do that. He nods and he, he begins jogging off towards the north. Um, Cho, everyone is awake. Smash cut back to the camp. Um, they have all kind of gradually moved out 
towards the fire and some of them are eating and like a couple of them have you hear them like murmuring to themselves, like, I don't see anything. I don't know what he's talking about. And like, and one of them goes up to you um, and, and, and says uh, like, Master Cho, uh, what, what is it you were talking about? Uh, no one seems to see any of these white furs. I kind of uh, suggest to the plateau area. And I say, don't be, don't be obvious. But there were eight white furs standing on that ledge up there eight. just watching just watching the camp eight and yes and how many and attacked you and your brother we can't be sure that the attacks came from above the mountain uh, uh, above the cave entrance from where we were and we could not and it was dark we could not see them i need to we need to get a head count we need to make sure everyone is here <clears throat> I, I start counting who's with us and who hasn't joined us yet, but I know that they're there because I went to their tent. And how many How many do we have in numbers, Bill? Nine. Nine of us. Of course we do. <laughs> now you have nine of your students. <clears throat> um, so you you kind of like the the, the crew is kind of just they're not tense, but they're just like kind of on alert, you know, like they're trying to be low key about it. Uh, some of them are like eating, but others are kind of just like, sort of like, you know, kind of keeping an eye out where you gestured to. Dude, I don't recall. Um, do we have our grappling hooks and oil and things like that with us? It's all on the wagon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to take, uh, one of, uh, one or two of the other students and start gathering climbing supplies and things that we will need. Okay. Smash cut back to older brother Shao Zen. Hmm. I fear my um, end brothers. <laughs> you, you would like to continue following these tracks. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. You are following them. Now, when you are tracking, you are basically moving at uh, normal speed. Despite your monk abilities, you can't track. It's kind of like sneaking. You can't like go max speed while you're sneaking. You can't go max speed while you're tracking. Um, so you're you're moving through, and you see that the three boot prints like kind of zigzagged a bit back and forth, like as if they were trying to get away from the person on foot. And at a certain point they split off hmm. and one goes south back towards the hills. The other one keeps going west and the other one goes north. So southwest or north. Oh, you might be wondering, well, what direction did the, the footprints person go north? So the person with the bare feet ran after the person who split off to the north. Uh, okay. I think north would probably make the most sense. So let's logically go to north. Okay. You are tracking. Um, make a survival check. 23. Gotta love plus sixes. Roll high, brother. Roll high, brother. They were splitting up the party. We're vulnerable. Forget, don't forget, you got your marker rebirth for the day, just in case. I'm going to save that little baby for later, <laughs> just yeah. in case. For real. <laughs> I'll be like, I got a deuce out of here. <laughs> okay. So you are following this, and it's heading back north. But the direction in which it's heading north is still a half mile to the west of where your base camp is. Hmm. And about a quarter of the mile, as you get closer to that, that other mountain, you notice something peculiar. There's a set of tracks where it goes from the boot prints, right? Like the person who was being chased and the human feet that were chasing them 
the human feet disappear and instead you see huge deep impressions and not just two it goes from two human sized feet to two really big feet with kind of paws and claws and then to four paws and claws it goes from a bipedal human footprint to a bipedal something bigger than that with paws and claws to a quadruped paws and claws and about 50 yards Jesus. up from that and about 50 yards up from that is where you find the eviscerated body of one of your Iraqi former students his head, arms, torso, and legs have all been ripped off. The body looks like it's been dead for maybe two hours. Um, there are flies, you know, kind of swarming around it. Uh, all of his stuff is there, like his boots, his clothes. Uh, his pouch, belt pouch, you know, had had some personal items, maybe some coins in it. Uh, even his his sword, all of them are still there. But it, it, and he's not missing any chunks, as if like having been eaten. But he's so just he's been torn apart. He's been torn apart, and, and blood, this is one blood of just the, soaked into the ground. This is one of the native people, or one of our guys that we came. This is one of the Iraqi people Iraqi. of Tizia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and can I see the quad track leading off to somewhere? Can I? Yeah, it goes. It goes to... back south and west. Okay. So he's chasing these. Okay. Um, okay. I'll I'll follow that set of tracks back down and follow them where they go. I'm a, I'm a, I'm thinking he's tracking these guys down. Okay. Uh, smash cut back to show. Make a perception check. Uh, twenty three. Okay. Um, you have oh, wait, gathered wait, wait, all. Wait, 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 wait. Ni sorry, nineteen. My perception isn't my isn't my plus six. Okay. Or you have six. gathered all the supplies. Uh, you have however many men you want. And they are waiting with tools. What do you want to do? <clears throat> are we waiting for a signal from Brother Cade? I don't remember if he said you have he was received gonna... no signal from any brothers. In fact, your brother Shao has been gone for a while. Yes. Um, as you are kind of as Mongozo, Mongozo runs up. I brief I brief him on everything and see what he has to tell me. He he says. Uh, I did not encounter anything strange. Yesterday we were working on the, the, the backup camp. We cleared some space, cut down some trees and began to prune them and prepare them. Uh, this morning I was still sleeping when your brother awoke me. I became aware that uh, the, the three men from your uh, group uh, were gone from the camp. Uh, I, I assumed that they had left. Are they here? They are not. We are down three men as well. Uh, where did Brother Shao go? He, Mongozo looks at your remaining men, and he's like, uh, yes, the three who, who were working with me yesterday, they are not here. There were two uh, Sakurans and one Araki. Uh, they did not come back, I see. Uh, your brother... He sent me here because he said that you had some concerns about white furs possibly attacking. And and you see Mongozo's like looking around. And and then he looks back at you and he says, Your mm -hmm. brother decided to continue following the tracks of the three men. Smash cut. Cade. We're playing a little game of cat and mouse, Cade. Um, while we have been doing all of this, I have been adjudic adjudicating Cade's, um, progress in devil cat form. 
Um, you are now ascended up and mind you, this is no path. So it's a good thing as a devil cat, you have extraordinarily high athletics because you were able to climb and a climb up. speed. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're, you're now 200 feet up. So you're higher on that end of, of the mountain. Yeah. Northwestern ascent. Um, you are higher now than where the mining camp uh, and the mine cave, the, the cave, the mine entrance, sorry, is located. Yes. Yeah. Um, you, you do not see or hear any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, to, since I to go around the mountain back to the south so that you could kind of see where your camp is, or do you want to kind of go to the north? What, what do you? I want to, do, let me look at this real quick. Uh, oops. No, no. I, I'm going to start tracking these bastards by smell. And I, I got to okay. find where they went because they have, I, ha I'll, I, I will let out. you, um, if you're willing to, to backtrack to where, you know, they were. Yeah, I will. I will. So you, you can climb down and, and head to that Western cliff where you saw the rock piles. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. now I will let you make a perception check with advantage based on smell. All right. And by the way, you see like white fur, you know, like shed, just shedding, like yeah. in that area. Like it is obvious that there were the they were at work here. Fourteen, with advantage. Yeah, I rolled a seven. So you you tell you could tell that they went up the mountain from here. Okay, that's all I need. I just I go in that direction. Okay. I don't. I, don't, I can I can make another one later. Okay, so you begin go, going back up. Yeah, specifically right. following that. Smash cut to Brother Shao. Um, make a survival check to see if you could pick up the tracks. Uh, 20, not a natural. Uh, the quadrupedal large paw and claw creature headed southwest and then south and then jogged west. Um, and you see the tracks kind of stop. Uh, and then they turn back into human footprints and they head north. The boot prints of the person who had headed west continue up the hill and over the rise of the hill. Do you follow those? Hmm. I.e., it looks like the person being chased, their tracks still went on. Chased his ass all the way back home. No. Get farther away. <laughs> oh, further no, away. South, the opposite south direction. and west go away from your camp. Okay. Yeah, it's on the hillside. So he's going yeah. over the hills. So he seems like he got away. Um I will follow the shoeless tracks. Okay. I want to see where they go. I think that's more of a threat. They go north. Okay. I will continue north. Okay. You continue north. Um, Cho, Wangozo is with you. You're at the camp. What do you want to do? I want to make sure that the fires are stoked and ready in case we need to send smoke signals up or a smoke screen. Okay. Um, Your to, men begin gathering more wood uh, and, and from, debris from the and pile that you debris have. that will make it more of a dense yep. smoke. Yep. And I just keep everyone calm. Keep everyone ready. Uh, make sure that we are paying attention without obviously paying attention to the ledge. All right. Uh, make a perception check with advantage. 17. You you don't don't see any outlines, silhouettes, or otherwise evidence of any of the white furs. Something has distracted them, drawn their attention away from us. Uh, 
I... I don't know how much longer I'm willing to wait for brother to return before we have to go start looking for someone. Yeah, you, you haven't heard from either of your brothers. It's been hours now, hasn't it? It's It's been, it's coming up on an hour. Okay. I'll give them a bit more time and then okay. we will start moving towards the tunnel. Smash cut back to Cade. You have ascended the western slope. You're at 200 mm-hmm. feet. You're yep. going to make another perception check based on smell with advantage. Oh, that's way better. Uh, that is 24. Uh, not only do you smell them, but you find more sheddings, you know, like the occasional chunk of fur on a, on a rock. Yeah. Um, it is becoming obvious that there, I don't want to say a path, okay, but it is mm-hmm. becoming obvious that there are certain kind of areas where they climb in a zigzagging yeah. fashion to make their, their ascent easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you begin following this and kind of picking up on the scent, and you kind of get in that zone and you're just, you know, kind of moving up. You get to uh, 350 feet. Mm hmm. And you see there's there's kind of a, a level, just a, a little yeah. cliff, like an outcropping. Oh, yeah. That has a small cave. Oh, yes. Um, and the small cave entrance looks like it is about three feet tall. Wow. And three feet wide. Um, and, and then mm. you, so you smell the fur there. Mm-hmm. But you're not really sure how one of those big beasts would fit into this. But you also smell more of the scent, and you even see some fur uh, up, up further up ahead of you. But at 350 yep. feet, you find this little tiny cave entrance. Oh. What, okay. what side of the of the? This is all the on the western this, side of the west mountain. western yeah. side of the. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how much higher does this mountain go than I'm on? About four hundred feet. Four hundred more feet. Yeah, you're 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 a little under halfway up. Uh, I'm gonna go one more leg of the journey and just see if I can find another bigger entrance. But I'm noting where all these, not a path that I would normally consider, but like I'm noticing their their path. That way okay. I can uh, for future reference. All right. Uh, make an athletics check. I'll give you advantage on it. That's not bad. Let's see what's the athletics on this cat? Uh, what would I just add my strength as a devil cat? Then it doesn't have an actual athletics score. Really? Uh, I just have skills, perception, and stealth. Uh, is that the stat that I gave you? I thought I had. Yeah, the the email. All right, hold on one second. I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to pause. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, so the the Nicene uh, creature, um, the the devil cat, aka the Nicene panther, aka the uh, Popoki, um has athletics <laughs> and a climbing speed so go ahead and make the <laughs> athletics check uh and i'll give you advantage because you were able to discover yeah how the white furs move up so go ahead and roll yeah so i i had rolled uh a 16 so that puts me at a 22 okay you get up to the 400 foot mark and you you see that there's a I don't want to say a ring, but basically there's a a narrow path where like the, 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 it's kind of carved into the mountain, but not man-made maybe by erosion. You're not really Mm -hmm. sure, but at some point it, it looks Mm -hmm. like this five foot ledge kind of rings from where you're at on the Western side to both the North and around to the South. 
Okay, so it's like a pretty big semicircle ledge kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm saying as far as you could see, but bear in mind this is a half mile. Mm -hmm. Like so, as far as yeah. you can see before the mountain curves around, it looks like this five foot yeah. ledge goes around. Um, yeah, it's a long it, path. Yeah, it does look like there's more evidence of climbing spots yeah. to the north. <sighs> All right, I got to start heading back down. I got, I'm heading back to camp. Going the way that you came up, or do you go around the ledge and go to the south towards the camp? Do I perceive which one would be faster? Well, or I mean, certainly to go south. If, if you're going to go yeah. down the west and then go south to your camp, yeah. That's one. That's one way to to follow this ledge to the south. At least we'll get you on the southern face of the mountain pretty fast, mm -hmm. like really fast. Yeah, I'll um, do that. I don't know do what there I'm is going, going down from there. Yeah, I understand, but I, I might as well. I got to get down. I might as well get more information as I'm going down. Okay, I'll go south. You start going around the ledge. Um, you make a quarter mile kind of along this, and you're now mm -hmm. on the south face. I am being stealthy per se. Way below. You see your little camp. Yeah. It's like looking it's like at a, it's like, like a Legos. Little, like you're it's yeah. like you see like little dee 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 dee, like little movement. You see a couple tents yeah. and a little fire, and you see your little you know dirt ring that you're like, I was so sure that it was a concentric circle, and it wasn't. It's mm -hmm. like a flawed circle, yeah. but you know. You, you see everything from up there. Yes. And then you're looking below you, and you see 100 feet down from where you are is another uh, cliff outcropping yeah. with yeah. what looks like maybe the opening to a cave. So okay. at about the 300-foot mark. Okay. So uh, the first one there I is found... A cut, that... there, the path that you're on, the ledge, continues. Mm -hmm. it, it continues. But there's also a drop down from about where you're at, about 20 feet. And then there's another mm -hmm. ledge that kind of goes down almost like a cutback. Yeah, we got a friggin' hive system going up here. So many openings. So the one that I just saw below me, 100 feet, is at 300. And uh, the other opening I found, you said, was at 350-ish? Yes. Right? The little small one? Okay, so I got one at 3, and I got one at 350. That's not very good. All right. I start. Uh, I start making my way down. So, Make a perception or... check with advantage. Okay. Uh, that's so freaking terrible. Um, that is a ten. No, nope, I'm sorry. That's eleven. Okay, you're you're descending, and you get to uh just above what you see this this outcropping is mm -hmm. and you see this cave entrance is significantly bigger and wider okay. uh it looks like at the at the apex of this cave entrance is about 16 feet tall and it looks like it's about 12 feet wide mm -hmm. you definitely smell a significant musk of the white fur scent mm -hmm. okay. um, in, uh, in and found, around this area, okay. but you don't see any. Right. Yeah, I found the main entrance. That's my goal. And now I'm just going straight to camp. I ain't messing around anymore. Okay. You are descending. You get all the way down. It takes you a while. Yeah. Um, Shao Zen, I'm going to tell you that what you see is you, you follow these tracks of uh, the barefoot person. And they basically bring you to the other mountain, the mountain to the west of where you guys are. And it looks like they, just before the mountain kind of ascends, they turn back into that quadrupedic form and begin climbing. And it looks like they're climbing up that mountain. And they're not visible to me. I can't see them. Uh, you don't see anybody, no. You don't see any creatures, no. You look up. It looks like a straight up climb. Like there's no ledges, there's no paths. Okay. Uh, but that's kind of where it disappears. And you figure you're about a mile away from, you're a mile west of where your camp is. Okay. So 
I'm going to, I'm going to drop this uh, pursuit because obviously they're not going after our guys. And then I'll just, whatever it takes to get back to camp. Um, you can haul ass cause this is open land. Yeah. So, so I'm, can... I'm, I'm going to use my key point and I'll, I'll use the dash. I'll use all my yeah. abilities to get back to camp as fast as I can. Okay. Um, you are hauling back to camp. Brother Cade, you were on your way back to camp. Cho, um, as you are just staying, you know, vigilant, um, Juan Gozo's with you, and, you know, you hear uh, the sound of movement, and you see a cat descending from uh, what looks like one of those devil cats that you guys saw on the other island, descending from <clears throat> the mountain, um, coming back down the mountain. And as you are coming down, Cade, you get to the the mine entrance and you could see now because it's daylight much more clearly that when you guys were attacked and ambushed that the the mine entrance was completely covered right with like yeah. boulders and cavens and stuff so you could see yeah. that 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 amount of excavation is going to be day work. of work right um but you mm -hmm. you see the camp you you go down the path you easily go over that that part of the trail that was still kind of dominated. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're coming back down the path, you're about 50 feet above your base camp. You see your brother, Shao, running at like incredible, unbelievable speed, his feet barely touching yeah. the ground, coming back yeah. towards the camp. And he just, in one jump, kind of like acrobatically flips over the wall that you created and, and like land <laughs> in a skidding stop of like, like grinding across the gravel and dirt <laughs> yeah. into the camp. Yeah. Um, not, not to be shown up. I do my own little, my own little stunt. <laughs> so the, the three of you plus one gozo plus nine mm -hmm. of your people are in the camp. Mm -hmm. You guys, I assume tell each other what you discovered. Yep. And as you share this news, uh, Juan Gozo says, uh, he says, then, then it is possible that the other two workers who were helping me yesterday, that they, they live. Is that what you think, Shao? I believe so. I perhaps, think they got away. Perhaps they, they, they got away. He says. But well, they're alone and I don't think they have weapons to survive. So at some point we're going to have to maybe make it known to them that we are all okay here and then send out a, maybe a party to go get get them back I could, I could probably find them pretty quickly yeah i think it would be good to to help them if they do not know their way through yeah. the hills uh, there can be other dangers unknown but i could uh good while we have daylight to find them yeah. i could uh use a i could use my my second wild shape and go into devil cat again and then or no actually i'll go into dire wolf form and then i can track them on these uh plains and hills pretty easily okay and so quickly. you want to do that and then the other brothers want to create a smoke signal okay yep so you guys kind of you know feed some green plants onto uh onto the fire and then you use the tarp to kind of hold in some smoke and then release it up and mm -hmm. while you're doing that, Cade, you you and Wangozo go out and scout. And I'm going to say four hours go by, okay? Mm -hmm. And midday, you have found the other two laborers. Okay. Um, they are skinned up, a little bit scratched. Uh, they they tell you as you guys are heading back to camp that like that they were you know they woke up early in the morning uh, and they were going back to the main camp to fix some breakfast. And that they were chased by a nude man wearing no clothes. Mm -hmm. He was uh, tall and fair-skinned like the Iraqi people, but even, even more pale in his skin. Mm -hmm. And his, his hair was, was uh, like a yellow but almost white and and long and and he he had a long beard and this same color and he chased us and and we we tried to speak to him and he began convulsing and he turned into this great large creature with 
much like a bear and yet with with long fur white fur everywhere and 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 he it, he he no longer seemed to act as a man but he he sought us and we ran and and we split up and and you know we don't know what happened after that um and they describe this situation to you yeah the other man's dead they, he got him they 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 both seem very saddened by this news um let's get back to camp you guys get back to camp and like i said about midday maybe like two in the afternoon um you have returned the two sakurans uh who had been you know running away were skinned up they they basically you know the other people kind of apply some yeah. stabs to them yeah patch them up but um your numbers now are one less and uh as you guys have kind of scouted and discovered more about the area around you um and it is middle of the day uh Mwangozo, you know um takes a few of the the laborers and goes off to the southern camp and returns about an hour later with a stockpile of wood. And and he says, uh, this wood is still very fresh and it will not burn very well, but perhaps uh, it will be enough to keep a fire lit and perhaps the smoke will be a good thing to, to keep these creatures away. I do not know what the, the night brings, but I hope it is not as dangerous as what we encountered last night. And that is where we'll end this episode of High Adventure. Tune in to the next episode to find out what the Brothers Zen uncover as they, as they try to reclaim the silver mines of Tizia. Thanks as always for liking and subscribing. Make sure you click on that notifications bell so that you don't miss the next episode of High Adventure. Have fun, happy dice rolling, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy, the wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.